So that brings me to our second element of bold presentation skills, and that is your body language. So when we give a presentation, we work so hard on what we're going to say, and maybe we work so hard on our slides and our handouts, our materials, and how I'm going to introduce this and my bullet points. And sometimes we forget that there's this whole other component of communication, and that's our body language. So what are the elements of body language? When we talk about body language or nonverbals, what are some of the things that make that up? What are some of the elements? Posture. Yeah, how you stand. What else? Facial expressions. Facial expressions, whether you're smiling or frowning or just looking like a deer in the headlights. Right? What else? Yeah. Eye contact. Absolutely. You're looking at people. Right? <laughs> Making sure you're not ignoring that part of the room, that part of the room. Good. What else? Yes, hands, hands. Your, ge your gestures, what you're doing with your arms and your hands. What else? Your voice, so important. Your voice, how you project it, how fast you're talking, how slowly you're talking, how much you enunciate, right? How the voice changes in high pitched and low pitched. Good. What else, Jessica? How you move, right? Sometimes when we're nervous, we do the little dance. We're pacing and we don't really realize what our feet are doing. I've seen people do like a box step while they're, you know, we start watching their feet. <laughs> you know, I had one client I was working with and he was a, a periodontist who was presenting on periodontal surgery. And the guy was so excited about dental surgery. And we had great slides and I'm a big advocate if you're going to use slides, use pictures and blow the pictures up so they take up the full slide. So he did that, and I had to look at pictures of dental surgery and bloody gums, and I thought, oh, maybe, maybe you can make those pictures smaller in this case. But he would present, and he would roll up his sleeves as he was talking about dental surgery, and then he would roll them down, and totally not aware. So I said to him at the end, do you know what you're doing with your hands? And he says, no. And I said, look at your sleeves. One's up, one's down. <laughs> and he said, did I do that? I said, yeah, you did. So I said, next time you present, wear short sleeves. So we avoid that until you learn you know, where your hands are, wear short sleeves. Let's deal with the effect first before we deal with the cause. The point about body language is that it should tell the same story as your words. So when you're trying to develop and demonstrate confidence, your body should help you rather than undermine that. Because if you get in front of a group of people and you don't make eye contact, and you're slumping over, and you're not sure what to do with your hands, and your voice is really soft, it's not conveying confidence. Now, I'm exaggerating, but sometimes that happens, right? We're so worried about what we're saying, or we're nervous, that we don't realize our body language is giving us away. It's undermining the authority. It's undermining our confidence. And so these aspects of your nonverbals are important because they help to send a message to the audience. Because if, if your words are great, your script is great, but your body language says not confident, not sure, the audience gets confused. And they might just believe the body language and not believe what you're saying or undermine that. Say, well, you know, she said X, Y, and Z, but she didn't sound too sure of herself, so I'm not sure we need to go with that. Right. So be careful the next time you have to present. Check in. What's the body language doing? And this is all fixable, by the way. The good news is these are just skills. Most people aren't born good communicators. Most of us aren't born bold. Few people are, and that's good for them. But the rest of us have to work at it. And it's all practicable. It's all skills that you can learn, get feedback on, and improve. So make sure your body language tells the same story and doesn't undermine your message. Because very often you work on that script, you work on what you're going to say, you've got it, and you don't have the effect you want because your body language is not there helping you. It's really getting in your way.